I look around. You know what I see? Losers. I mean, like, folks who have lost stuff. Their homes, their families. And we're facing a threat. When kids think, you know, superhero movies, you know, a gun-toting raccoon or a talking tree doesn't really come to mind. Yeah. Um, do you think these characters will speak uh, to viewers as much as the classic superheroes? I think they will speak to viewers even more than the classic superheroes because what are we all really inside of ourselves if not a gun-toting raccoon? I don't even know what that means, but I like saying it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think that Rocket and Groot are really the heart of this story. Um, I think that Rocket is the heart of the story. I think Groot is the, whole, the soul of this story. And through them, we're really able to experience the world in a different way. They're both outcasts, they're both oddballs, and I think there's a lot of people in the world that feel like that. And so that even though they're a tree and a raccoon, I think they're, they're both characters that most anyone can relate to. You've taken some liberties with the characters' costumes and of course the storyline. How do you decide what to keep and what to change? Well, again, I think I'm an instinct. I'm an instinctive beast. You know, as an artist, I just create what I feel in my gut and what I believe and what I believe is true and what moves me as a human being. And I find that when I do that, that's when things work out the best for me. When I'm honest, you know, completely honest, that's when movies seem to appeal to everyone else as much as possible. And so I just follow my gut, you know, and sometimes that means keeping things how they were in the comics, and other times that means making pretty substantial changes. But we are first and foremost making a movie, and we are creating the movie version of Guardians of the Galaxy. So we have to make sure that it's the best possible movie that we can make. And you have a twisted sense of humor in all your movies, and people love that about you. But how do you remain true to yourself while making sure that the film appeals commercially? Well, I think that I just made the movie that I wanted to see. And it had to be the movie that I want to see today as an adult, and it had to be the movie that I would have liked to have seen when I was 12 years old. Uh, it has to be the movie that I'll want to see when I'm 75 years old. So I think it's really a movie that's for me at all ages, and hopefully that translates into a film that people want to see everywhere. And I think that's the thing about Guardians of the Galaxy. It really does invite everyone to be a part of it. It isn't something that's trying to be so strange or so different that it's pushing anybody away. It's trying to be unique enough and interesting enough and true enough that everyone can take a part in it and enjoy it as a film. You posted on Facebook that up till last week, you were still sort of tweaking the film a little bit. Does it come from a place of insecurity or are you a perfectionist? Um, probably a little bit of both, uh, but I'm definitely a perfectionist. I am beyond a perfectionist. I will never be happy with anything and I don't really stop uh, unless I really have to. And so the movie has to come out so I had to stop and I, I flew here um, yesterday morning and right before I got onto the plane I went in and I did my last little fixes on visual effect shots and then I, I flew here. Uh, so I wasn't done until then and in fact I'm gonna go back and the day I get back, I go into the office to finish up working on the 3D of the movie. So uh, for me, it's really not over until it's over, which is the day this movie comes out in theaters. Vin Diesel voices uh, Groot, right? How did you break the news to him that he has only three words to say in the entire film? <laughs> Well, fortunately, I don't want to have to break any bad news to Vin. So fortunately, Vin had read the script and he knew that there were only three words that he said. And the great thing about Vin is he says those three words in so many different ways and he's so emotive and he has such a beautifully deep, resonant voice that, uh, that he'll make you believe that there's nobody else that could ever do this character justice but him. And Bradley Cooper voices the Rocket Raccoon, of course. Yes. Um, how do you tell a former People's Magazine sexiest man alive that, hey, we don't want your face on it, we just want your voice? I think one of the things that Bradley loved about playing this role was that it didn't rely on his good looks, it didn't rely on his you know, basic charisma. He was able to create a character that was totally outside of that. And I think he really loved the character work of creating, if there was such a thing as a talking raccoon, what would that character be like? And so he's a sort of angry little dude that, you know, we've all come to love as we've made this film.
Totally fake. I am Groot. Thank you. Oh. What is that? It's a bomb. And you leave it lying around? I was gonna put it in a box. What's a box gonna do? You just wanna suck the joy out of everything. 